Hi, welcome to this new video at protopic.co.uk. I'm just going to run through basically designing a project from the ground up. So this project's an office lighting and door lock controller, uh, web-based, though it's a, a browser-based system rather than web-based, as we're only using it on an intranet. Now, some notes here that I put down for myself. It must work with Firefox, that's our preferred browser. I have actually checked that the syntax I'll be using is supported by Firefox, so it is basic HTML. The program must be for internal use only and not accessible from outside the network. Basic security there, you don't want anybody else accessing a, an internal system. And that's easily uh, handled by not forwarding the particular ports that this uses. I also want the unit to be password protected. It's a very simple password protection, but I'll run through that. Uh, within the code, which you can download below. Uh, I want to be able to turn Office 1's lights on and Office 2's lights on. I also want to turn them off, so I'll just update the note there. I also want to unlock the front doors during office hours. This will allow clients and staff to easily access through the front door into our small reception area. This will be handled with a, a solenoid. Now I won't run through the wiring of the solenoid, it's fairly easy, it's its own 12 volt supply and you're using the relays as a, a switch. Now I allow access from the back door for staff, visitors or guests. This will be similar to a door entry system where I'll click a button on the web interface and that will give a 5 second timer and it will open the lock You'll be able to enter the building. And then after five seconds, or five seconds from activating it, it will then re-lock the solenoid mechanism again. Now, moving on to what we're actually going to use in this project. We're starting with an Arduino Uno, which you can see on the bottom here. That's with the red leaf plugged in. And on the top, I've got an Ethernet shield plugged into our internal network. Now this is a photograph showing a red LED in its lit state. It's a, a 330 ohm resistor between pin 2 there and ground. Now this is the live system. In the bottom left you'll see our control panel. It's a very, very basic one with the LED button. I click that, the LED comes on almost instantly. There's a very, very slight delay. This is due to network traffic. And you'll see the LED button turns green. Now this screen actually updates itself every five seconds with the current state. It reads what the state of the pin is and gives you a green or a grey button. Now here we have a relay shield. The relay shield, there's nothing really to see on here other than there's some lights that light up at the back and you hear them clicking when you switch it on. And obviously a stack here of when I've put them together. So you have the Uno on the bottom, the relay shield on the top, and the Ethernet shield on the top of that. Now after I've tested my firmware, make sure everything's running, I'm going to mount it inside this red case. So this is the stack here with the Ethernet shield, the relay shield. I've cut holes inside of the case for access for the relay connections and power. There's a hole inside there as well. So the power goes in the bottom and that's enough to power the whole unit. There's no need for a USB lead. So we're not going to reprogram this once it's in situ. Now, if I were to reprogram this unit in situ, I would need to use an adapter shield like this. Uh, I built this using one of our FDDIs, a capacitor on one of our prototyping shields. I'll just run some wires on the back and so there's some headers in. Now, that mounts on the top and uses the power that you plug into the UNO. And when the FDDI board is sitting without a jumper on the voltage selection. It will actually use the voltage on the board. Okay, I'm just going to pop the case on here just to show you the alignment of the Ethernet jack. Now normally you would go through and you would tighten up all these screws here. So I'll just uh, run through. Okay, that's all tightened up. Just imagine it is. We'll get our cable. Plug that in. And there's a unit ready to go, and I'll just click on the interface. Yeah, 
everything's fine. So what you want to do is jot down what you want your project to do. Uh, exact details aren't required at this time. My basic idea of what I wanted was an Arduino based system with an Ethernet controller so that I could have a web based interface or a browser based interface and four relays for switching four mains loads. Now you break down the project into different parts and get each part working. Now you can either use dummy variables here, print commands or even hardware buttons to call functions if required and expand on the details uh, for each stage. So I had my Arduino working with an Ethernet shield and I found out how to pass a statement to that shield to enable it to switch on and off various pins. I then got the relay shield working. Now the relay shield uh, uses pins 4 to 7 for the, the four relays. Got that up and running and then I decided right I need back door to run for about five seconds so I, again I added that to my small notes so I knew when I was programming the Arduino after this point exactly what changes I had to make to the code. Then combine the different parts one by one so your Uno, in this case I only had two parts so my Uno I had my Greenly shield then my Ethernet shield. I had to go in this way because the Ethernet shield the RJ45 jack is actually too high to have the relay shield sitting on the bottom without snagging or interfering with it. Now, it doesn't matter in which order you actually start these shields as it's the pin numbers that you've got to look out for. So you build your unit, you test it and test again and then after that more testing. Now if you do all this testing beforehand it's going to make things a lot easier later for maintaining your unit. Now down to mounting your project in a case. Now if you don't have a pre-cut project case like the official Arduino case which is enough to put your Uno and your Ethernet shield in then you're probably going to need to do a bit of milling or cutting. Uh, as a rule of thumb always cut as few holes as you can get away with. Always measure at least twice. Cut once and pay attention to things like standoffs that are already in cases because if there's a couple of standoffs already there that you can take advantage of then that's going to save you putting a, a spare couple in there or an extra couple in. When you mill your case always mill before you mount your electronics inside. There's nothing worse than you've mounted your electronics and you find that you need an extra access hole. You then line up your drill, drill through and you slip and go straight to the side of your board and rip off some components. Now if you're going to be limited for space you may find that you're going to have to mount your equipment where you can't get access easily with your programmer whether it be a laptop, PC or what have you. So again this is where the programming shield that I showed on the video comes in really handy. You plug it in and you're able to use the FDDI to actually upload to your project. It's ideal for updating things like the password on this particular unit. And finally, what you need to do is test your unit. Get somebody else that's close by to test it. Get them to do everything and anything they can and see what breaks. It's better at this point that something breaks and then you can sort it either in your code or the hardware rather than at a later stage, you know, a client or yourself or a member of your family or one of your work colleagues does something and it hangs up the unit and causes major issues through the office or house or what have you. Now this is how I generally build projects both here at work and at home and I hope this has given you some insight and some ideas on how to plan your projects. Thanks very much for watching.